Hello, and welcome to episode 44 of the Fiber and Dice podcast. If you cannot guess by my current posture, I've already filmed part of this once and it wasn't running. I am not happy. However, we will try it again. But this time you probably won't get the comic relief of the engineer darting back and forth through the background. Sorry. I wished I'd hit record the first time. So, that brings us to episode 44 of the Fiber and Dice podcast. I am your host, Rebecca. I am Engineers Falcon on Ravelry and Instagram. I am on Ravelry for the Fiber and Dice podcast group and for the Blue Bonnet Fibers group. It's a little tiny right now. I don't do a whole lot of there yet, but I will. It's on the list. So, Hunt me down in any of those places you are interested in following me on. So, I have not recorded in over a month. Or right at a month. I don't remember the exact date. So, I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to give you the standard list of excuses and apologies. And then from here on out, When it has been a month since I podcasted, instead of giving the same spill that I give at the beginning of half the podcast of why I haven't recorded since the last time I saw you, I would just refer back to the standard list of excuses and apologies per episode 44. So, here we go. This is not number one the first time I filmed, but now, number one, I hate technology. Or more appropriately, technology hates me. We are not friends. So... Sometimes this whole podcasting thing is a little tiny bit frustrating. Not frustrating enough to not do it, but kind of frustrating enough to procrastinate. Number two, I have a lot of anxiety that I'm learning to deal with. And sometimes it is more than my nerves can handle to sit down and film and put myself out there. Number three, we homeschool. And it takes a lot of time and even more, it takes a lot of emotional energy. So if I've used up all my emotional energy in homeschooling, then I don't have any left for podcasting. Number four, are we on number four? Half of my house is on the autism spectrum. And they also take a lot of emotional energy. I know we take a lot of emotional energy for them to cope with too. So not judging, just. That's another factor that goes into the day. Five, we travel a lot. Like every weekend. We were gone more days of July, then we were home, or parts of days. Like, we will leave on a Friday afternoon and get home on Sunday afternoon, but that's still three days that we were not completely at home. Six, are we on six? I don't have anything to show you because we have traveled and homeschooled and I didn't get anything done, so I don't feel like I have anything to talk about. That's really not true. I could talk all the time, but I don't have anything on topic of fiber and dice to talk about. Number seven, I didn't put my makeup on today. Obviously I did today. I I try not to film without my makeup on because it just, the red hair and the pale skin gets really pale on camera. So, and if we don't go out, which we don't on a lot of homeschooling days, I don't have my makeup on. And I love you guys, but not enough to put makeup on in the summer because it's a hundred degrees at sunset here. It is 100 degrees when my children go to sleep. There have been days it has been 100 degrees almost until we went to bed. It is hot. And we have refrigerated air. Bless my family. They have evaporative air. And it is very melty in their house. But all of our windows, we have one, two, three, four, five, six big windows or good size windows. They are all on the side of the setting sun. Rises in the east, sets in the west. They all face west. So we get all that hot direct afternoon sun and the air conditioner can run for six hours and we never get below 80. So all of that to say, there are lots of excuses why I have not podcasted in almost a month. And I've missed you guys and I'm sorry. So you'll never have to listen to that spill again. But if you want to, I will refer back to it in the future, I am sure, and remind you that it was the beginning of episode 44. So, I'm sorry I'm not the most regular of podcasters. 
I hope that you guys don't take it personally because I really do like you. I love my podcast community and my friends. And I feel really bad when I neglect you guys. So that is my excuses and apologies. So on to the next segment. It is the Mountain of Conquered Things. Would you like to know what's technically actually in the Mountain of Conquered Things in a month? Not a thing. However, I'm very close on two things, so I'm going to go ahead and show them to you because there is a chance that by the time I film again, I will not have them anymore. So the first thing is my first complete item for the um, Fat Cat Knits Yarn Along. It is Sushi Go. It has not been soaked and washed. That's why it's not technically a finished object in my very uptight list of rules about what constitutes finished and what doesn't. This is headed to Cece of the uh, Geeky Girls Knit podcast. She lives in Scotland and she is one of my dearest podcast internet type friends. And so I am, I was thrilled. She, she called this the first day I showed it and I was like, yes, I would love to send it to you. It is going to be a gradient. It goes from, oh, it's not a great, well, it's a, it's a semi-gradient. It's, it's not a crystal cut clear exactly, you know, when it changes, but it is also a there and back again, because it's going to start with this beautiful green color. It's going to move here. Let me turn it this way. I think it lays better this way. It starts with the greens. It moves into the yellow oranges, then this salmony pink, then the yellowy brown oranges, and then there's another green on there, and then the other green. Sorry, my skein is a little, oh, here we go. I should have grabbed it at a tie. This is, this is how that there and back again gradient is going to lay out. So I'm very pleased with it. I think the colors are gorgeous. I think they are soft and beautiful. It's spun up beautifully. It was my first time to work with this fiber and it was just marvelous. So I will, I mean, I know technically I can't win my own prizes. I guess I could make a rule, but I won't since really I'm doing this for you guys. But I will still enter it in the finished objects thread because I love it. And of course it will be a little less springy after it has soaked and chilled out a little bit. My other finished object was a very part of a very precious gift from my mother and sister. They were in, well, when we get, you know what, this is as good a time as any to do that because there's a lot of it to talk about. I will segue from finished objects, semi-finished objects to, um, to this, this awesomeness that happened to the Blue Bonnet Fiber Shop last week. My sister was in Denver and my mom, they were both in Denver to visit friends and they visited Fancy Tiger Crafts. This was the second time they have gone to get me pretties there and I greatly appreciated it. And so they got me these gorgeous things. Look at this. This is all going to end up in the shop. This beautiful gray merino. I, it, I, this color, it's just amazing. Um, natural colored brown and white alpaca. The very cool thing, okay, I don't know if you guys remember, but I said one time I wanted to have um, uh, a fiber superpower and that would be to identify things by smell. I can, not entirely, but I could tell me like when I, because they made me close my eyes when they handed it to me. And so when I smelled this, I knew that this was not, um, that this was not wool. It did not smell like wool at all. When they handed me things that they had ordered separately from the trip from Fat Cat Knits, I could identify it by smell every time. Three things, three things. And then I could identify the colorway as soon as I opened my eyes. I kind of felt like a, a Fat Cat Knits geek, but I'm good with geekery. We all know that. So they... They did hand me three things from Fat Cat Knits that were not, um, that were not from Fancy Target Crafts. 
for uh, some sushi and quest from the yarn along, some, I don't remember, I bragged, I bragged, and I forgot, of course. This gorgeous green and blue colorway, it will be in the show notes. And some frog and carp, which I spun that weekend while I was there for the shop. And it has not been skeined, but I balled it up so you guys can see the gradient in it. Gorgeous. Oh my goodness. This might be a new favorite colorway from her. So this will be in the shop later this week. I will put it on Instagram when it goes up. So I love it. The things that were in that bag, the rest of them that were from Fancy Tiger Crafts that were not from Fat Cat Knits. This. This is soy. They got it for me to see what I thought about spinning it. It is so different. Like, I didn't expect it to feel the same. I know that they, they don't. They don't feel the same. But it is so dense. Um, the, the shop owner said that most people either love it or hate it. We will see which one I am, but I'm thinking it would look gorgeous spun and then plied with a gold thread. We'll see. Of course, I make those plans without knowing what it does on the wheel, so its final destiny will not be determined until it's on the wheel. And then two of my favorites, this Malabrigo. Oh, it is gorgeous. Archangel. This is one that I will be very tempted to keep for myself and not put in the shop. I will probably do this just as a barber pole. Just a fractal, fractally barber pole something. I'll decide when I unwrap it and see what it looks like. And from, I think this is my, this will be my first Malabrigo fiber to spin. She got me some last time they were there. For my personal stash and instead for the shop stash and I haven't spun it yet because I haven't been spinning for myself which is something I dealt with this week I'll show you in just a minute and another this is completely new to me Dyer and I cannot tell you how much I in love I am let's see if I can get the tag up here without pulling the fiber up yet Sweet Georgia and if you don't know about Sweet Georgia which I had seen but had not actually owned yarn it says passionate relentless unapologetic color Those blues and greens, they are amazing. So, in between spin-along stuff, I have got gorgeous new fresh fiber for the shop. And I am tickled. I'm sorry. It is, it is warm. And I am sweaty. My, my apologies. I'll try to quit fidgeting with my hair, but when it touches me, it is, it is warm. So. That was all the sweet goodness that my sweet mom and sister sent for you guys that buy from my shop to be excited about. So, um, if you see something that you fall in love with and you want to put dibs on it, it's not like the shop is just such a hop in place that it would be like a cat fight for it. But if you'd like to put dibs on something, let me know and I will put you immediately up into, um, I'll, I'll move that fiber up in the queue so that you can. You can get it next on the list. I think I'm current. I think everything that has been pre-ordered from me is spun. I think so. I would have to double check. There might be one. There might be one order out. And if it's your order, let me know. No, I know who it, whose it is. So what is currently climbing the mountain? Did you notice there were no books? I haven't finished a book since I talked to you. I am not happy. There's going to have to be some rearranging of the priorities around here. I start librarian look. My favorite part of these glasses. Um, there was one other fiber from there. It's what's currently on the wheel. Charms, can you help me? I can't reach the other end of the table and I don't want to like flash my cleavage into the camera to get it. So the engineer knew he was going to have to assist. I need the bobbin that, no. The bobbin that's closest to you. This one. Yes. And the fiber that's by it. This one. Yes. Oh, and the that tag for it is under my chai. I've had a five pump chai into Dr. Pepper this evening, and we went out for uh, tea time. We do Tuesday tea time 
there is very rarely any actual tea involved, but it's kind of become our, like, my date during the week with the kids. And we wanted Charles to get to do a Tuesday tea time, so we went book shopping at Starbucks. I did have chai, or I'm having a chai, which it might explain the speed at which I'm talking. So this was the other one that she got me. Uh, what is the colorway? Wildflowers. It is gorgeous, and it is spinning up stunning. So all of these gorgeous colors, and I have this little piece left for this bobbin. And it will be, um, I'll spin it fractal. The, the other piece, I'll, in case, I use a lot of spinning lingo, and I'm trying to explain more of it because I know I have quite a few viewers that do not spin. I am working on evangelizing spinning, but if you don't spin, I still want you to feel welcome here. But I also don't want you to feel like I'm trying to talk over your heads. I spin, when you fractal spin, you split it in half, and then you spin one bobbin's worth from one end to the other. So that's going to stretch each of these sections of color out really, really long. Then when I do the other bobbin, I will divide the second, obviously this is not actually the second braid of fiber, but uh, the other piece of fiber into a handful of pieces, however many long. I like to go for six. I like the size that six spins out, and I like the way that looks knitted up. And so when I spin it the next time from end to end, there will only be this much of this color to, to stretch out instead of this much of this color. So the second bobbin will still be kind of in the same order, but it will have shorter repeats of the color. Barbara pulled with the longer repeats. And I really love that effect. So that is currently on my wheel. What else is currently on my wheel? Quest from the Fat Cat Knit Journal. I have to tell you guys, this is the first time I've ever had more than one project on the wheel at a time, ever in my whole life. I've always been a monogamous spinner. So apparently not this month. I loved these colors. This is what's on the bobbin. This is, and this is the second half of that fiber, and it's going to be all barber poly. I have to tell you, when I embraided this, these are not the colors I normally spin, but I was impressed even when it was in the, you know, when it was all braided up. But I have fallen in love with these dark, earthy, foresty colors so very much. I really do love them. And when they spin up, like this section is breaking into some maroon colors and into some colors that match my hair and into some rich soft browns. And then this starts becoming blues and grays and mossy greens. And then this is just splitting into these gorgeous golden tones and gray tones and bits of green. And um, she said she used a slightly different dyeing process when she made these, one of the newer things she's been experimenting with. And whatever she's doing, I am loving the way it makes the color spin up. So that is all shop fiber. And since I've been spinning so much shop fiber in the last two years, I've spun nothing from my own personal session. I've been kind of bummed, but I'm trying to always keep shop fiber on the wheel. So I didn't know what to do about that until... I remember that I own a drop spindle and I have only done one project ever on the drop spindle. It was the very first thing I spun and it was also the first thing I dyed. I will bring that next week. Maybe I will, maybe I will remember that. I'll bring my very first, it was in storage. So it came out of storage recently and I found it and I remembered it being really hideous, awful. It is not. I'm pretty pleased for it to have been my first thing off the drop spindle. But shortly after that, I moved to the wheel. And so I busted the drop spindle out this week and found that I really enjoy it. It is great on homeschool days because I can, um, well, one, I can be standing up, which is good for my restless leg syndrome. And two, it's much easier for me to pick this up and set it down than the wheel for whatever reason. Once I sit down at the wheel, it takes me a few minutes to get in rhythm. And then when I get in rhythm, it goes really fast. Well... If I'm stopping every five or 10 minutes to do, you know, homeschool mom things, which I enjoy, I don't ever get in that rhythm. So I'm trying to save that for the evenings, but this let me spend some during the day. And so this is, this is deep stash. I don't even remember how many years this old, how many years old this is, but this is from, 
Knitter's Nightmare. It is called Sunset on Gallifrey and it is Merino Bamboo Silk. I love this little logo. It is, oh, see me, I wrote that it was all mine when I was dividing my stash up into my personal stash and shop stash. So, yay! And it is these gorgeous goldy browns and blues. And this is my little, my drop spindle. And this is the yarn I'm making on it. To be my second project and to have not had the spindle in my hand for two years, I don't think it's too bad. I'm pretty pleased with it. I think it's probably a little fuzzier in real life. Um, I still have a habit of catching the, when it's hanging like this and it's spinning, I tend to catch the fiber that I'm drafting from in it. So I get little puffs of, you know, just little uneven places where I, where I snagged it. So, but I was like, I can have fiber going for me. I spun in the car on the way to New Mexico this weekend. I spun while we were watching Disney Descendants. I will mention that again in a couple minutes. But um, I'm having a lot of fun. And while it, it's not going to make something I would probably put in the shop ever, maybe, maybe I'll get better with the drop spindle, I don't know. I see people in Ravelry who make this amazing drop spindle yarn and I am just blown away by it. They are so consistent and so gorgeous. But even if my drop spindle never reaches that level, I'm okay with that because I don't, I don't need for my personal projects the quality that I like to put in the shop because it doesn't bother me and I'm not asking someone to pay 30 to 50 or $60 for it. So it's just fun. There's, it, it's no pressure spinning. So that's been a really nice stress relief this week. So I think, I think, think, think that is everything that, oh, there's one other little tiny uh, climbing the mountain. Obviously, this is also base camp because, hello, tons of awesome stuff. I have had a little bit of time to knit, not a whole lot, because, you know, we're traveling a lot. Um, refer to the beginning of this podcast for all the excuses and apologies, but mostly excuses for why I haven't been knitting. But this is my father time cowl. And I have made notable progress on it. I think I was probably about right here last time I podcast, so I've added all this. And I am well past, um, or pretty close to halfway. I don't know if I'm actually well past yet. But. So it'll be about twice that wide. It's just a little cowl. I liked how the um, lace pattern, obviously when I pull it out, the holes are very obvious. But when it's just kind of hanging, it brings the emphasis onto the knit stitches rather than the the holes, the lace holes. So that is pretty much everything that has crossed my hands fiber-wise in the last month. Something else exciting I did? Well, I'll save that for next week. I played Frog It or Finish It. And I will talk about that in the next episode because that was the best thing that has ever happened to my stash. So more about that in episode 45. I'm going to stick a new little segment in here. Um, some weeks I may have it with ducks in a row. Some weeks I may just have one or the other. I don't know. As you guys have probably already figured out, I don't play by hard and fast podcasting rules. I do this because it's fun and I love to visit with my friends and I like to make new friends. So that's really the, oh, and I'm kind of a gaming evangelist. So I guess that too. But um, I'm going to have a segment called Media Break. And when here at the house, but especially during school days, very rarely are they allowed a media break. Usually they have to take a play break and so they can't, you know, bust up video games or anything like that. But on occasion, at least once a day, sometimes twice, they get a media break so they can bust out DSs or iPads or whatever they want to do to play. So I have quite a few little media related things that I've been enjoying that I wanted to talk about. So I thought I would just create a whole new segment on the spur of the moment called Media Break. This week, all of my media break has to do with having children because, you know, I've got kids and they are a huge part of my life. So first is the Disney Descendants movie. I was skeptical, very skeptical because, okay, it's, I, I still enjoy Disney movies. Like the Disney made for TV movies. I fell in love with them when 
was pregnant with my first son and I was so sick for nine months. I couldn't get out of bed, like way sick with him. Very picky, very, very, very picky. So it was also our first time to have cable. And so I, um, I watched a lot of Disney Channel. And I like their little cheesy teeny bopper made for TV movies. I think they're pretty fun. I think Descendants might be the most fun one ever. It is the children of the villains. The children are screaming, yay, from the other end of the house. Um, it was so fun. Kristen Chenoweth plays Maleficent. She is a riot. Right. So I thought that was fun. We've been watching a lot of Disney Descendants. We have seen the behind the scenes episodes. We have explored the extras on the DVD. We have taken it to grandparents and friends house and shown everyone that we have hung out with. And quite honestly, I'm not, I'm still not sick of it. So we bought the soundtrack. I'm not even sick of the soundtrack. It's not going to, you know, I wouldn't give it, you know, like awards, but it's been a lot of fun. So I say thumbs up to Disney Descendants. The other thing I want to talk about, and I want to talk about it this week because, um, well, it's part of school, and it is Minecraft homeschool. We were completely... So we meet here again. Why, yes, this does mean that once again, my camera was not recording. This time I don't know what I did wrong because it just stopped itself. So... I think I was rambling about Minecraft Homeschool. We love Minecraft Homeschool. If you are homeschoolers and you have kids that play Minecraft or that might be interested in Minecraft, I highly recommend it. We started it for summer camp. We had done some, we, I downloaded the free Minecraft trial thing. In about half an hour, I got, I fell off cliffs. I got eaten by things. I couldn't figure out. Now I know you're supposed to hit a tree. I didn't know to hit trees. That was not instinctive to me. But the biggest problem was that I just got real life motion sick playing. So I had just thought, nah. Well, we have some friends in our homeschool online community that do Minecraft homeschool. And so I thought it would be fun to try it this summer for summer camp. We are in love with it. It is so much fun. The basic setup is we're using it as electives this year. There are all sorts of choices. I can speak personally for summer camp science and summer camp fun and games like this last five weeks has just been fun they range between i think 15 and 20 dollars per class a class runs six weeks every week you get a handful of new assignments you go into the assignments web page and log in you can do graded or ungraded we're probably gonna do ungraded this semester because i don't need more grades to keep up with they Give them a topic to learn about, and there are all sorts of topics for classes. There are some Bible classes, but if you're not Bible-y, then so far I have not seen where any of the other classes that they would be offensive. So you go, you open up the, the lesson for the week for whatever topic you can take, Castles and Canons, you can take Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. This fall they're going to start a series that goes through like Asia and Europe and, you know, so... Each session, they're going to do a different, you know, region of the world. So you go in, you open it up. There's something to read on your current topic. And then there are usually some videos to watch. And if you have older kids, older than sixth grade, there's some extra stuff that they can study. But that is not mandatory. Then they take a quiz on the topic to show that they have read and understood it. And then they get a stack of assignments. The first one is an individual build. You go onto the Minecraft homeschool server. Actually, I think it has just changed to Minecraft school, MCS. And you have an assignment to build something related to the topic that you studied. This week we talked about medieval cities, medieval towns, and so they are building medieval towns. They get to claim land so that no one else can go in and touch their stuff. Only people who have your permission can mess with your land claims. You can play in creative or survival mode, but um, there's no PvP. There's no, um, they're very strict about not taking other people's things. There are moderators on all the time so that language is monitored. If someone does mess with your child's property somehow, 
uh, if they friended them and they turned out not to be trustworthy or just something goes horribly wrong, there are ways to report that and get that dealt with. They can usually reset things back to how they were before things went wrong. Um, there was some griefing going on with one of the projects they were working on, a side project. They were building a pirate ship with friends, and someone came in and burned their pirate ship. And they were able to fix a lot of that for them. The moderators were. It is just, I don't know, it's a lot of fun. My friends have made, my, my friends, my kids have made quite a few friends already. They set up times that they're going to get on and play together. And then the last week of every session is server parties. And I was a little skeptical about server parties. I was, you know, I'm a homeschool mom. I was like, we're going to pay for a whole week of non-curriculum. Let me tell you, these server parties are the most fun thing ever. They have got class pictures that they take. There are all sorts of fun games. The captains and the moderators will run, will run huge, like, they play one game that's one in, a, one, one in the hole. And so you get on a terrain and everybody hops in. And then you just start, sounds awful, but you just start killing each other and it keeps count of your kills this sounds really violent it's just really not that violent it's really fun it's like getting knocked out of love letter you come right back um and then the first person to 20 kills wins they played a game summer camp 2 was just fun camp it's mostly been games they're trying out new games for next fall and so um there was one game that was simply a room full of colored blocks and it will pop up what color to stand on and so you run and stand on that color and then the floor drops down and if you're not on that color you're out until the next round starts easy simple fun stuff um the moderators are very serious about making sure that language is appropriate that people are not spamming that no one is being mean and i have been very very impressed some people count them as full credits i'm just counting them as electives because I don't want them to have to throw that much energy in. Oh, what I was going to say, I didn't finish telling you the parts. I'm so sorry. It's all the chai. So they do the individual build. Then there is a team build where you you all go and build a huge skyscraper or, you know, the pyramids and the sphinx, whatever is appropriate to that theme. So everyone works on these huge, amazing team builds. Then there is a redstone assignment. If you... If you know about the redstone sign of Minecraft, you can do that. And then there's some extended activities for things you can do at home and send in pictures in. And sometimes they share pictures on like the Facebook page. And then there is, seems like there are two other things. If you want graded and you're at the more advanced level, they can write a couple sentences or paragraphs and answer some questions that aren't the multiple choice quiz and have those graded. And then every week there is a new, when you've done all your work, there will be like a parkour course or one in the hole. There'll be some kind of game open up for you to go and play with your friends at the end of the week. So we are huge fans. My kids are going to be taking a Bible class and a, we haven't decided, we don't decide. There's creative writing choices. There's geography choices. There's world culture choices. There's one called the Poverty Project where everything, all the money, that's spent on those classes goes to a specific charity. And then they explore poverty around the world. And then, so in their challenges, they don't have the resources that they're used to having. And they acknowledge that that's a very mild, you know, example of poverty, but they want to get the kids thinking about what happens when you don't have what you're used to having. What would it be like to not have fresh water? You know, things that they take for granted. I was very impressed with that. So um, I don't know if we'll do that this year. We, we just haven't decided. There's a whole uh, five or six in a row that you can go through American history from, you know, pilgrims through, I don't remember the last one was, something Civil War maybe. I don't remember. All of that to say, we're going to be doing some of that this year. If it's something you're interested in, um, check them out. I think the, they're rebranding between summer and fall from Homeschool Academy to Game Ed Academy, G-A-M-E-E-D Academy and Minecraft School. But if you're interested in that, let me know. If you have kids that are already part of Minecraft Homeschool, please let me know. If they would like to be uh, friends with my kids, I can give you their names. 
and maybe they will cross paths on the Minecraft server. It is a closed server only for people who are taking classes. So that is, I like that. I like that, I mean, technically we don't know the people, but at least it's in a controlled, monitored environment. So that makes me feel better than just sending them out to roam the internet. So I think I'm going to move on to the next segment. I'm going to get the engineer over here and we will be right back. And welcome to Gamerly News. I'm here with the engineer and Hello. we have a lot to talk about. So I'm going to just right, jump right into it. Charles, what big thing has happened since <laughs> last time we recorded? Real life, Gamerly News. The last weekend in July was Gen Con, which happens every year about that time in, in Indianapolis and is the largest board gaming convention in North America. We were not there. We were not there. Um, 60 some odd thousand other people were. Uh, it's it's huge. Um, in fact, there's another large convention coming up in September, October in Germany uh, called Spiel, which is German, I think, for game. Um, it's been the biggest one in the world for a while. Gen Con has been catching up the past couple of years. And now they're kind of neck and neck. But it's where all sorts of huge game announcements happen. Um, lots of people play games. There's all sorts of vendors and new games are released. And um, so we're very, we're very familiar with the con concept. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it, it is called the San Diego Comic Con of board gaming. We have fiber cons and fiber cons. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, there were all sorts of very cool things and expansions announced for a number of the games we're excited about. Um, I really am just drawing a blank. There was so much awesomeness. I can't understand you. You're too big. Um, so there was a lot of things going on that weekend that you can find. Um, I know Board Game Geek and Dice Tower and um, excuse me, pretty much any board gaming website or, or fan site will have a lot of coverage from there. And they will give a lot better explanation than I have. So... <laughs> Go talk to them. All of that to say that we participated this year. We went to Gin Cant. We hashtag Gin Canted a lot of things on Instagram. And the engineer won a prize. They actually had vendors and game companies and um, people. There was a list of like 300 prizes. It was just a tremendous list. And so they were picking from people who shared pictures and people who entered a raffle. Uh, to win various gaming supplies or board games or little promotional um, cards to go in with other games. I found ours particularly funny because we didn't know what won until <laughs> we got it. So we opened the box. There's a little sticky note. Congrats. You make Gin Can Awesome. Andrew from Spiel Pro. We opened it up and we're like, what did we win? We got four bags of blank game cards. <laughs> I thought that was a very appropriate Jin Cant yes. gift, prize, whatever. Yep. However, I'm actually really grateful for them because I've mentioned a couple times that I'm working on a game. And so they will be perfect for making the cards for the alpha and beta versions of those. What I'm going to do with that game, I don't know yet. <laughs> but I'm going to assume that as the process unfolds, I will know what I'm supposed to do next because... I have been reading the Kickstarter updates and a lot of gaming designers right now are blogging and writing and sharing, podcasting a lot about the process of designing games. Do you, you know, do you work with a publisher? Do you do Kickstarter? All the different options. So it's a good time to be designing a new game. So there will be more on that as more develops. And now that I have solved the, where do you get blank <laughs> cards problem? We can move on to the next stage of actually getting the, the components the boards are made the cards are not so i'm i'm out of excuses <laughs> now go game now no. go game now yes. go write if you're a writer you should listen to the writing excuses podcast oh, yeah. i'll stick that in media break next week i'll talk more about that cool. i cool. love it right. so real quick oh kickstarter yes kickstarter alert kickstarter we well I guess we've talked about this at some point. Yes, it was a two-by-two two game. Okay. this Yeah, we played this earlier this year, Scoville. It was one of the first games to be back on Kickstarter a year ago. They are currently running a campaign for Scoville Labs, where... Well, okay, in Scoville, 
we are participating in the town of Scoville's annual chili pepper harvest and cook off to raise money for the local high school. Um, and so you plant peppers and then you move your little farmer guy around and you harvest peppers based on which peppers are planted. And basically it works off of a, a color wheel and a little that chart right there. Um, and I do enjoy playing band of white for the <laughs> game boards. <laughs> And so once you've harvested peppers, you turn them in and you get rewards like money or more peppers. And there is a recipe contest that is on the other side of the board in this picture, but it's... No, nope, that's, no, that's not it. Anyway, there's a bunch of recipes and you need certain combinations of peppers to turn them in for, for claiming the recipes and then you get points. And like so many games, whoever has the most points at the end wins. Shocking, I know. Indeed. So they have an expansion... The challenge with this game is that you've got your guy wandering around the field, and Rebecca has her guy wandering around the field, and you can We're play up to We're aiming to get him now, you and yes. I. I love um, it. It can play up to six players, and so sometimes you may want to use a combination of peppers that are in the field, but you can't get to them because somebody else is in the way. Scoville Labs has this little uh, three by three grid that's your own personal board and your own personal lab that you can crossbreed your own peppers in. So it looks, it's going to have that, some more recipes, um, extra pepper meeples. So it's a lot of fun. And it's only got a few days left on Kickstarter. I think it's sometime in the next week. Um, so also, if you don't have this game, you can back them both. Yes. Go back it because when we unlock the last level, this grid that we oh, were yeah. talking about, there will be an alternate version of it that's like a formula card. I would really like to unlock that because the formula card will be easier for me personally to use. So yep. if you love me, go back to this game. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, the other thing that we backed today was Cat Tower. Cat Tower. We backed Cat Tower. And it is a dexterity game where there are little folded up card, half folded cards that have little kitty faces on them. And they're insanely adorable. But the goal is to stack certain combinations or stack as many of them as you can in a certain time. And then there's a little cat die uh, weight that you put on top. And if it stands for five seconds, then you've won. So very quick playing. Uh, it's what they call a dexterity game because you're actually trying to manipulate things. I will not be good at this game. <laughs> but it will with, be with balance and coordination uh, as opposed to just uh, rolling dice or playing cards or other standard game mechanics. I'm not good at the worker placement game. I roll horrible luck. I'm not good at dexterity. But you have fun anyway. But I have fun anyway. So. Uh, so yes, Cat Tower is also up on Kickstarter for a little while. Okay, I'm watching this. Okay. <laughs> Things we've been playing. Princess Bride games. The Battle of Wits is exactly what it looks and sounds like. You are... You you pick an iconic character from the movie, and we start putting our cards into the wine glasses, face down, blind. There are as many wine glasses as there are people, and you either put poison or wine in it, and you also use your cards. This is the content side of the goblet card. This is the bid side to bid four cards. At the end, whichever one you win with your bids, you drink. So then you start flipping these over and seeing, are you drinking poison or... Or did you choose the cup in front of her? Of you really should have chosen the cup in front of you. I don't win this game very often. But once again, <laughs> it is way fun. I'm, I still... I, I think I won. I did live. Well, there can be multiple winners and multiple losers. Yep. So this is, so this is you and this yeah. is you dead. So you flip the card over and then you have been banished back to the world of black and white. And Miracle Pill is an absurd, fun, <laughs> card drafting, mixing, matching, making things game. I will not even go into all the details here, but it has been a lot of fun. And the kids have really enjoyed it. Miracle Pill upset it. The kids have really enjoyed it. There is a third one in this series. It is... It is As You Wish. We have not played this one yet. Um, but I have read games. the rules. Yes. <laughs> um... Basically, this is another card drafting game where you start with a hand of cards, you pick one, and then you pass the hand to the left. Um, and you're trying to collect sets, and you're basically, they're all scenes from the movie. 
and you are rewriting them in your own order to make your own scene. And depending on which scenes you have and which character you are, affects bonus points and extra scoring. Sounds a little fairy tale-ish. Uh, a little bit. So... Charles is going to discuss my new favorite game with you. Okay. <laughs> you guys are going to be so proud of me. It's a worker placement game, and I played it. I voluntarily... Let me rephrase that. <laughs> I volunteered to play this game twice. One, because we spent a fortune on it on Kickstarter mm. to get it with the Tuscany expansion. It's Viticulture. No one told me it was a worker placement game before I was already at the table with all my pieces in front of me, and I looked up at Charles and I said... I said, this looks like a worker placement game. And, and it is. It is. And but I didn't hate it. it. Because there are no hidden points. I can win worker placement games without hidden points. This is what I've learned. I don't do good with the hidden points. Okay, you talk. I'm good right. to mom. The, so, in Viticulture, you so are a winemaker. Well, each player is a winemaker. Okay. One of the geeklings just wiped out over the computer cord. Um... And so, we are each running our own winery in the Italian wine country. And it's a so beautiful game. It is a gorgeous game. This is by uh, Stonemeyer Games, and they make, they make gorgeous games. They make games. gorgeous games. Um, I'll tell you the funnest part of this game. It's not the only fun part, but I really did enjoy it. The variety of meeples is stunning. Mm -hmm. Rooster meeples and... Big worker, worker meeples and normal worker meeples and windmills. There's a windmill meeple, peeps. I have a soft spot for windmills. I really do love them. That comes from growing up in West Texas. Yeah. Um, so we spend the game planting vines and making wine and then selling the wine and kind of running that um, during each round, which is a year in the in the game. You are placing workers out on the board, which is the worker placement. Worker placement component. Component. Um, component. This game, they've actually taken some of the blocking that happens in a lot of worker placement games and found ways to compensate for that. There's That's still, another thing I really like yeah. about it. You can get completely blocked out of an action, but you always retain, or you have the option to use your meeple, your... Grande. Your grande meeple. Okay, you hold this one. There's your normal meeple. And this is your grande meeple. He can go to a spot that's already full. And I love that because nothing frustrates me more than having a plan that gets ruined because I'm too cheap to bid on the first player <laughs> spot. Um, but, so there's that aspect that lets you catch up. And there's also a, uh, a number of cards that duplicate that, yeah, they duplicate the other actions that are selectable on the board. So sometimes there's only one spot that, to go plant vines. So if Rebecca's taking that, I don't want to use my Grande Meeple. I can go and use the play a card spot and use the card I have that lets me plant vines to also plant vines that turn. So there's there's a lot of extra balancing and a lot more room for getting to do most of what you want each turn. Uh, whereas some of the other kind of classic work replacement games, especially Agricola, if you don't get the spot you need, you are out of luck for that turn. And then you've got to wait for the next one and hope to get there. Those games make me a little ragey. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't like them. I'm not, I don't know if I'm not good at the games or I'm just not good at controlling my temper. Would you guys believe that I can be a raging, board-flipping woman? I can. I can get really angry. I've only really done that once, twice. I think twice, twice ever in my life. Yeah. And one was just a little tiny. I just kind of shoved the little miniature two people Agricola out of the way because I was just done with it. It was a stupid game. It's a great <laughs> game. It really is. I'm not bitter. <laughs> no. Um, so. So, yeah. This is an awesome game. Just um, And then the testing expansion has 12 modules. Yes, 12 modules in it. There's a larger board. There's other cards. There's a cheese making section. So, and they're kind of designed to where you pick a couple and add them to your game. And the next time you play, you pick another one. And so you kind of, um, I don't think it's intended to play with all 12 all at once, unless you want to spend you know, all day playing. So, Sorry I left the screen. I'm really working on that. But I dropped a piece on the ground. 
which is, I mean, we really do try to take good care of our game pieces, but we gamed with a good friend, Drew. And he, like, had nervous breakdowns when the pieces hit the floor. So after gaming with him for a couple of years, it's, like, reflexive. Something hits the ground, and I can feel him cringe from San Francisco. I can feel his angst that my game pieces have hit the ground. So I can't leave it down there. Okay. Okay. So that so, is... I'm changing the plan. I'm sorry. Okay. That's everything we've been playing. But since we talked a lot, and there was a lot to talk about this episode, I'm going to save the real game of the week for next week. Because it needs more than the six minutes I'm about to try to cram it into. So, you guys want to know what it is? I've talked about it a lot. I've mentioned it a zillion times, but I've never given it Game of the Week status. Dun, dun, dun. I'm Isaac Mystics. So, I'll tell you more about that next, I say next week. I really mean next episode. It may be next month. It might be next year. No. We've got a yarn long going. I can't disappear that long. <laughs> so... Um, come talk to me about Minecraft Homeschool. Come talk to me about anything you want to put your name on in the shop. Come talk to me about what you're gaming. Hashtag things. All of that is in the Instagram challenges on the uh, Ravelry sure. group. Talk to me about what you're spending for the yarn along. Are you doing yarn along stuff? I got word that lots of people were doing that and then I haven't seen much. So now, in all fairness, I haven't shown much either. So I totally understand <laughs> Anything else to talk about? Did you go to Gen Con? Come tell me what you did at Gen Con. Did you win something from Gen Cant? Or did you just do Gen Cant? If you did, I probably stalked you on Instagram. <laughs> if you went to Gen Con, I stalked you on Instagram too. I'm, yeah. I'm an Instagram creeper. I like to know what's going on in places that I'm not. And if you hashtag it, I'm going to hunt you down. <laughs> so, love you guys. And I will, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. See you guys in a couple weeks. Bye. Bye.